in the last class we had seen that uh, uh, what is the value of n for which uh, the propellant will operate stably right. Uh, in all the analysis that we had uh, looked at uh, till the last class we had looked at uh, basically determining the burn rate in a strand burner or a Crawford bomb right. Uh, now a uh, uh, rocket motor depending on its application if it is in a tactical missile or a launch vehicle can be very very large compared to what you uh, do in a strand burner right. Strand burner you essentially take a few grams of propellant and uh, measure the burn rate. Now in today's class let us look at what are the parameters that are going to change when we go from this uh, small strand burner test to the actual motor and how do we account for it in some sense okay. Firstly if you remember uh, I had written that burn rate R dot is a function of chamber pressure initial temperature cross flow velocity and composition uh, this part of about cross flow velocity we are going to look at it in a little more detail uh, this is going to cause what is known as erosive burning that is uh, if you have a rocket motor whose uh, port diameter is uh, quite close to the throat diameter then uh, it is going to be subjected to uh, erosive burning we will discuss that a little later uh, in the course. So this is one part we will not be able to measure in our strand burner test okay. So the first thing that uh, we are not able to look at in a strand burner test is uh, erosive burning okay that is going to be different in actual motor compared to this. Uh, there are some small motors uh, which are spun at some high rpm in order to make them go straight okay. Uh, these are probably in tactical applications only tactical missiles only they are spun at a high rate so that they go straight. Now what happens in such a case especially in an aluminized propellant is these aluminum particles are subjected to a centrifugal force so they tend to burn much closer to the surface so therefore the burn rate increases uh, strand burner you do not have that so that is something uh, that you have to account for okay. Then what are the other things that you think will change from the small strand burner to the actual motor? Chamber pressure you can essentially hold it uh, the same as the uh, what is going to be there in the large rocket motor that is not something that is bound to change. Huh? Uh, yes uh, G loads but that is not going to be uh, large in uh, uh, both uh, strategic missiles and launch vehicles because uh, if you look at it their accelerations uh, go from somewhere around uh, 1.6 to 4 g's but they could be of significance in tactical missiles. Uh, these come on because uh, they are subjected to enormous accelerations right. 
then uh, as a consequence of this and also if you look at the entire mis uh, missile or launch vehicle it's a large mass of propellant right there are regions which are subjected to strain because of its own weight those things not been uh, kind of included in our tests in the Crawford bomb right so effect of right so these are the things that uh, change from our Crawford bomb test to the actual test uh, typically it is seen uh, that the burn rate variation from a Crawford bomb test to an actual test is uh, somewhere around uh, less than 10 percent somewhere around 8 to 7 to 8 percent okay. uh, <coughs> it is still vital primarily because if you look at uh, uh, the GSLV kind of configuration or the Arian uh, 5 kind of configuration or the space shuttle configuration you have two large solid rocket motors right uh, now if they do not complete combustion at the same time you are going to have a tremendous side force which could topple the entire vehicle okay which is uh, something that is not desirable or you need to have a tremendous control force to overcome this which is also uh, not easy to uh, overcome because the thrust produced by this motors are very very large okay. So that is something uh, that is very important to note that there are changes to burn rate from the uh, strand test uh, Crawford bomb test or the strand burner test to the actual motor and uh, the, there are kind of thumb rules to tell us what is this difference going to be people with experience uh, will know uh, that if they conduct the uh, burn rate in a Crawford bomb and then as an intermediate you have something known as a ballistic evaluation motor and then the actual motor. So if you have the data for all these three then depending on the Crawford bomb test uh, you can then uh, what they do is. Uh, while making the propellant they take a portion of the slurry and get the burn rate of the slurry and if the burn rate is different then they add the suitable burn rate modifiers to get it back to the level that they want it to be so that uh, they know what is a priori before they cast what is the burn rate right. Ah. As I said in some tactical uh, missile applications if you want it to go straight they are spin stabilized you know bullet uh, bullet is spun at uh, tremendous rate so as to go make it go straight otherwise aerodynamic loads will uh, make it uh, go in a different direction right. So you want it to go straight then you need to spin it. Uh, it is called as gyroscopic uh, stabilization that is if you still spin at uh, some uh, very high rates uh, the shells uh, are spun at something like 18,000 rpm okay if you spin it at that rate this is like a cycle wheel as long as you are pedaling it you will not fall off right even if uh, there is a force that tends to uh, destabilize you right if you look at the cycle it is like an inverted pendulum you can model it as an inverted pendulum it is a mass that is there at some height right and uh, inverted pendulum is you, you know is very unstable a small disturbance can uh, make it uh, change its uh, stability. So uh, there what you do is you spin the wheel so that you get that stability unless you are moving forward you cannot stabilize yourself right. So in the same way if you spin it you can then make it go straight and uh, coming back uh, to the topic uh, we had uh, also uh, uh, looked at certain equations for pressure in the last class right we had said that the chamber pressure PC is given by Right. 
Now, uh, we can uh, also add thrust, define thrust in a similar manner, right. We can use thrust we knew was F is equal to C F P C A T, right. So, now if you use this uh, definition for P C here, you will get F is equal to C F rho P So, this sorry, this has to be yeah, eighty is this is plus one. This has to be minus, okay, because this is in the uh, denominator. So, which you can simplify as So, uh, f you can define it in this fashion, right. Uh, we also know uh, that A, the term A has embedded in it the temperature sensitivity part, right. So, we can uh, use that, we knew that A was A naught into exponential of So, if we plug that into this equation and this equation, we will get the variation of chamber pressure and thrust. Why are we doing all this? Uh, Let us try and estimate if there is a marginal change to let us say the burning surface area or the throat area or changes in temperature, what is going to be the effect on thrust and chamber pressure. Okay. Why is this important? First thrust part, uh, I kind of explained it. Uh, in a sense, if you are looking at the launch vehicle part, uh, you do not want uh, the thrust to be uh, different in the two motors, that is uh, JSLV class motors. Even otherwise, uh, you the entire launch vehicle, if you lay, take a look at it, it should take the satellite to the required orbit height and it should give it the required velocity. If there is a shortfall, uh, in some cases they do use some liquid engines to take care of that, okay. Uh, but if you are looking at a missile, then again uh, you have this problem that even though temperatures are varying widely, you still want to be able to hit a particular target, right. So, you need the thrust to be estimated appropriately. Then uh, if you look at the chamber pressure part. The if you look at all aerospace systems, the factor of safety is going to be very small, right? Uh, it's somewhere around 1.6 to 2.2. So if your factor of safety is very small, then your margins are also very very small, right? Due to changes in temperature, if the uh, pressure exceeds by a large fraction, then you could have the motor bursting out, right? You wouldn't want that to happen. So we need to have some estimate of 
what is going to be the change to pressure and thrust if there are small changes to burning surface area or throat area and uh, temperature ok. So, uh, that is the reason we are trying to plug in all this into this equation. So, if you plug in uh, the A variation also you will get P C into exponential of ok and uh, similarly uh, f will also have uh, you can expand a in terms of this. So, f will be So, we have included all the uh, variations of A B A T and initial temperature right. So, let us now do something known as an incremental analysis wherein we will see if there are small changes to uh, the either A B A T or uh, initial temperature what will be the corresponding change in terms of uh, chamber pressure and thrust. How do you do this? Uh, very simple take a partial derivative right. If you are looking for uh, burning surface area take a partial derivative of chamber pressure or thrust with respect to uh, the burning surface area. So, let us do that. F and P C with respect to A B A T and initial temperature ok. So, what is the with respect to let us take firstly A B uh, what is the variation of A B with respect to or what is the variation of P C with respect to A B. So, we get do P C by if I take P C if I divide it by P C this is the same as A B appears in the same fashion in both these equations right. So, the partial derivatives will be the same if I take the partial derivative and divide it by the actual value then I will get the incremental change. So, this will be the same as do f by f is equal to here 1 by 1 minus n into ok. And uh, if you look at A T again uh, A T appears in the denominator here and it has a different sign uh, different power here. So, uh, 
this is with respect to a b then for a t uh, these two will not be the same so here it a t is in the denominator so it will have a negative sign And lastly, if we look at uh, how uh, these two change with initial temperature, okay, I'll call T i n minus T i n naught as delta T i n, okay. then both of them uh, change in the same fashion if you look at this both of them are raised to the exponential of this value so both of them will change in the same fashion so you will get So, we have been able to look at what is the incremental change to chamber pressure and uh, thrust in terms of changes to uh, burning surface area, throat area and uh, temperature. <coughs> now, let us look at how each one of these will vary. Uh, if you look at burning surface area right burning surface area is the area that is uh, seen by the flame now uh, if you look at a rocket motor Uh, this propellant can be extruded or cast okay either process you will have some kind of imperfections that is you will have somewhere cracks blow holes right so now if the flame comes to this position right let us say the position is somewhere here or if it is somewhere here it sees an additional surface area right suddenly an additional surface area is exposed to the flame okay so the burning surface area changes because of imperfections in the manufacturing process then 
these could be uh, you know propellants are made in one place and then uh, move to another place to the launch pad right so during the transportation it could uh, the damage could get uh, could be accentuated that is it could be increased and also if you are looking at higher stages having a solid rocket motor uh, due to the enormous vibrational loads that come on the propellant while it the first stage is burning let us say then the uh, these imperfections could also be increased there okay. So we now know how burning surface area will change uh, how do you think the throat area will change due to erosion of the nozzle you could also have uh, deposit okay if uh, it is a heavily aluminized propellant in some cases uh, it is seen to have a deposition also okay so either case is possible erosion of throat and as well as uh, deposition uh, basically in most cases it is uh, erosion is the more predominant pherom phenomena Typically this uh, throat erosion uh, or deposition is a function of the burn time if you have a large burn time right uh, then you could have uh, something like 8 to 10 percent increase in the throat area if the throat area increases then the pressure will drop okay and you are also uh, in a sense reducing the area ratio for the supersonic portion right. So, it hits you in two ways one is drop in pressure and then uh, the ISP will change because of drop in pressure one and then again uh, because of uh, uh, the expansion ratio being changed okay. The burning surface area changes if uh, you know if you are trying to make a large rocket motor let us say of the class of uh, GSLV Mark 3 the first stage which is a 200 ton propellant okay uh, as I said it is very difficult to make uh, propellants without imperfections right there will be some amount of blow holes some amount of cracks and uh, things so what they do is they do uh, detailed non destructive testing that is uh, they take ultrasound images of the propellant and study it and find out where the imperfections are how large are these imperfections okay so which is what makes it very very expensive because if you have to do the entire uh, rocket motor test it right it takes a lot of uh, effort and time and you also need those kind of facilities to make once the entire rocket motor has been made and uh, the reason why in one sense uh, they make a segmented grain is let us say you are casting 200 motors in one go if you make the entire motor and if you realize that uh, the uh, imperfections are only in certain portion then you have to redo the entire 200 tons right. Uh, so it would be better if you can make it in uh, smaller segments so that uh, you know you can take out the portion that is bad and then replace only that portion okay. but if you have also too many segments then your reliability in some sense goes down and you are also exposing it to in some sense combustion instabilities because uh, you will have some protrusions coming in because of the liner and uh, that is something that you would not also want. 
so it is in a sense uh, give and take between these two right. Uh, now lastly how much does the temperature vary the initial temperature uh, initial temperature varies from place to place and also daily variation and seasonal variation okay. even in a single place uh, depending on the season temperatures can vary and depending on the time of the day temperatures can vary. One good thing for us is uh, most of the solid propellants are very bad conductors of heat okay. So, uh, it takes them long time uh, to really sense what is happening on the outside. So, uh, typically it takes something like uh, depending on the size of the web thickness takes something like 24 to 72 hours to soak the propellant that is if the ambient temperature changes let us say from uh, 27 degrees to something like 0 and if it is there in that condition for a very long time only will the entire propellant go to that temperature otherwise you will have a gradient even in the propellant okay. So now we have uh, kind of uh, got these uh, equations let us linearize them in a or let us take a small variation in a b okay these are non linear variations let us take a small variation in a b linearize these equations and find out what is the change in pressure and uh, thrust okay. So, if you do that I have taken two cases wherein one as a small sigma one as a large sigma I will also take for each one of them what happens when n is small and when n is large okay. Uh, just one uh, important thing if you look at the uh, sign of these incremental changes both uh, changes to burning surface area and initial temperature have a positive sign okay. Whereas, uh, the changes with respect to throat area have a negative sign. Now, as I said also we will take two cases for n, n being small, n being large.
uh, this is incremental change in burn rate and correspondingly incremental change in the burn time. We know that uh, changes in pressure and burn rate are related r dot is equal to a p c to the power of n. So, we have used that to we can use that to calculate this and uh, if you know the burn rate you can also calculate the burn time. Now, if you notice this, uh, as I said earlier, this sign of this will be different from the other two, right? So, uh, all this is with minus sign, whereas all this is with plus sign. So, the changes in uh, burn time will be the negative of the changes in burn rate, right? So, notice that the worst case would be if you have a large sigma and a large n, then your changes to chamber pressure with uh, 10 degrees change in ambient pressure can be of the order of 26 percent, right, which is pretty significant and uh, thrust will also change by the same margin, okay. So, in a sense, uh, it is very important to have propellants that have low n and low sigma p right. But what do we do if we cannot have them, right? There is something that we want. Sometimes we are not in a position to uh, be able to achieve that, okay. So, what is the next best thing that we can do as an engineer? The 
only thing is try and control it in some fashion right as i said earlier if you look at this uh, throat area is in a has a negative sign compared to the other changes right one way to look at it is if you cannot have a propellant with low n and low sigma if you uh, look back uh, you will find that homogeneous propellants are always are going to have higher n and higher sigma right compared to uh, composite propellants so if you have such propellants which are mostly going to be used in tactical missiles what do you do uh, you can look at this and uh, in some sense if you can change the throat area depending on the condition then you will be able to achieve uh, or you will be able to minimize the changes in initial temperature because uh, this has a negative sign and that is what is done in uh, certain missile applications you will have a plug So if you have a plug like this of uh, whose uh, diameter changes from one end to another that is you use a cone and if you are threading this in some fashion then you can move it in or out depending on what is the requirement right. So you will be essentially changing the throat area to accommodate for changes in the uh, initial temperature right. The other way to overcome this is let us say we are in a position to store these missiles in a controlled environment okay and uh, as I said earlier uh, these are very poor conductors of heat. So it will take them a long time to uh, soak to the ambient temperature. So if you can maintain some of these missiles in controlled environment then and you are able to use it in the next couple of hours let us say then uh, these effects would not take too much of a toll right. So one way is to have a best is to have a low n and low sigma p if that is not possible then uh, uh, have something wherein the throat area is changing. Uh, this cannot be a solution for a large missile application primarily because this uh, plug is exposed to high temperature gases and if the burn time is very large it will tend to burn itself out which again will uh, dramatically change things you would not want that either. So these are applicable only for small tactical missiles with small burn times okay not for large uh, uh, boosters or uh, missiles and uh, as I said if you cannot uh, do this either then the only way is to uh, store it at a controlled environment store it at a in a controlled environment.
these are not possible for very large rocket motors also in large missiles you cannot have them stored in a controlled environment and then be able to move it to the launch pad uh, within a very short time. So, what is uh, done in such cases is uh, you will have a small liquid rocket motor uh, attached to the payload which will make up for uh, any loss in thrust which you can cut off at any stage ok. So, that is what is done uh, in missile applications in order to overcome this problem. Those small uh, liquid rocket motors are called as uh, uh, velocity uh, termination packages ok. So, if you do not have the required velocity at the end of it uh, that will make up for it by burning for a short time ok. So, uh, in the next class we look at uh, how to go about designing a grain of a solid rocket motor ok what are the things uh, that we need to keep in mind how do we get the required thrust time curve if we know a propellant has certain burn rate and other thing, ok. So, we will meet in the next class thank you. Uh -huh.